Yeah, do it. We're live. Well, we're not actually. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed. What they miss? Uh, they missed a lot they, of stuff, man. They missed about 20 minutes of uh, glorious singing. show that you'll see on D Live. Uh, I did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You can see it on D. There's two places that you can see this, depending on. Well, it really doesn't matter. You can go to D Live. What's the ad exact address for D Live? Uh, dlive.io slash uh, hashtag slash at bodhi.agora. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna have to, have to. I might switch that to radioagora.net. That's a good idea. That's much easier to remember. Yeah. Now, the other place you can go to is uh, on Facebook, on the Liberty Facebook page, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. That Then you can see the entirety of the show there. Now, are you ready? Are you prepared to move on to our first glorious story? I'm about ready to play the bump for the first story. Are you ready? When you're battling the powers of coercive associations, it's nice to take a step back and remind yourself that yes, it's okay to have fun, to laugh at yourself, and hey, maybe even laugh at others now and then. Welcome to Lulzilla, Lulz for the Lulz. That's right. You have entered the Lulzilla Zone. Now, I want to say something about all this Jordan Peterson hype. A lot yeah. of Jordison Pe this is This is irrelevant here. Very, Jordan very Peterson. George, George, whatever you want to call him, Jordan, Jordan Peterson. And, you know, you know, he has this, I, you know, I still haven't found, I want to, I sound more like, I felt, sound like a mix between Gilbert I, Gottfried and Jordan I've Peterson. i touched a girl. <laughs> no, 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 eh, 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 I married the girl that I fell in love with when I was two, eh? So, no, that's not true. He did. Well. He wasn't literally two, but he was a little kid, fell in love with a girl, and that's the girl he ended up marrying years later. Yeah. He didn't marry her when he was two. Okay. <laughs> you can you can back off the ugg face. So, you know, okay. Jordan Peterson, you know, he's got this whole lobster thing, you know. We're he we're like lobsters. lobsters. We're pretty you similar. Know, lobsters lobsters have hierarchies, so you you know, you should expect that in your life. Yeah, lobsters have hierarchies, so lobsters are somewhat related to humans. Actually, I'm not really ridiculing it. I, I think there's a lot of truth to it. I'm, I, I, well, a, I think. There's a little more truth to the idea that hierarchies are just part of the universe, and the most common hierarchy is highest potential energy to least potential energy. That governs the entire universe as far as we know it. Oh, my gosh. So I, before life, there's a hierarchy. I I don't know. Do you hear any distortions or anything in my sound right now, no. studio audience? Could you let me know? Because my daughter has decided, hey, it's after nine o'clock and it's before ten o'clock. Hey, that means my dad's doing a show. Hey, I think I'll take a shower because that's what she's doing right now. So. Okay. I, I hope not. So I hope not. Otherwise, my daughter's going to be homeless tonight. I kid. I kid. I kid. She's not even going to be homeless. She's just lobsters. Be... Okay, Thanks. let's get back to the lobsters. So, so Jordan Peter has the Peter Peter Jordan Peter. There's a Freudian slip. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Peter. has a Peter. Jordan has a Peter. So he has the lobsters, the almighty lobsters. And people are making fun of him. And uh, that Kathy Newman woman, so you're saying. The so you're saying lady. I was going to say girl, but I thought that's probably sexist. So I'm going to go to lady. So the so you're saying lady. I can't even hear you. She's not much of a lady. Whatever. I'm trying to be nice. Whatever. She downed Jordan Peterson. She dared challenge the Peterson. How dare we rally against Holy, Anna? Wh why oh. didn't I think of this sooner? The name Peterson. You're the Peter. son uh, of a, a Peter. Peter. You're the son of a Peter. I don't yeah. know what that makes you. And he's the jaw of a Dan. I can accept that <laughs> a little bit more than I can. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to get to this. Well, ladies and gentlemen. There is something out there, 
something. Okay, I'm going to set up the scenario. This entity was created in a college laboratory. No way. Could you not? It escaped, this entity, I'll say, escaped from the college laboratory in the mid-90s, okay? I'll just let you think about what it is that I'm talking about. And this entity has the power of all female all the time. Nothing but female, biological female. Within this entity, there is no such thing as a gen gender social construct because there is only one sex, there is only one gender. They don't even have that option. That's fantastic. Because they're all alike too. They're all very similar. <clears throat> they're they're powerful though. They're 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 amazing. They're all female. They can they can they can multiply without any males assisting them. Wherever they go, they tear down the patriarchy. They tear down everything. <laughs> Whatever it is, whatever native species happen to be there, they tear them down. They are. You really think about it. It's the SJW of the sea. This is this is the SJW of the sea. It's 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 incredible. Uh, of course, of course, many of you probably already know. I'm sure a lot of biological kind of folks out there. You know that I'm talking about the marble crayfish, and this is where. We get the title for our show. Just to remind you, let me go. Let me go back and show you the title of the show. Here uh, comes. Go ahead. Here comes the crusty. Hold on, let me start that over. Here <laughs> comes the crustacean wave feminists. <laughs> yes. So there's a story behind this. We didn't just make this up, but man, this is real. Man, we should have this. Uh, if you if this didn't exist, I'd want to make this up. So there, do you want to read this? Yeah, three is a ten-legged crayfish. Oh, that's a typo. That's a typo. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, go ahead. You caught ah. These, you know how much these bother me. A lot. Anyway, go ahead. There is a ten-legged crayfish out there that is all female that is threatening to take over the whole world. It all happened when one of these crayfish, called a marble crayfish, escaped from an experimental aquarium in Germany. Oh, man. The Germans the did it. It's the Cray Reich. It's the Cray Reich, yes! <laughs> the crayfish itself was a result of an accidental breeding that took place in the same aquarium around 1995. How do you have an accidental breeding? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out. The all-female crayfish that breeds asexually is now spreading throughout Europe and Africa and destroying the natives as well as whole ecosystems. You thought monsters were 30 stories tall? They're not. And they're, and they're, they're femicrace, femicrace? Femicrace. 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 Here comes the femicrace. The femicrace. Femicrace. So. So the story is actually from Science Mag. Yeah, which and is a good, uh, good magazine. Do you, do you want to continue? Do, do, do you got this right? Do you want me to do this? Uh, yeah. So an aquarium accident. need to read the whole thing. Jump around. Do whatever. An aquarium accident may have given this crayfish the DNA to take over the world. Take over the world! Uh, within two decades, clones of the voracious animal spread throughout Europe and Africa, bringing devastation to ecosystems. That appears to be the strange but true story of the marbled crayfish, an invasive freshwater species suspected to have been created through a reproductive accident in an aquarium around 1995. I don't know what that means. What does that? How, like you? How do you have a reproductive accident? I don't. It's like, did you? Well, I don't. I don't get it. Humans do it all the time. Bah, bah, bah. But is it really an accident? Your face is an accident. Yeah. Uh, in many ways, the invasive expansion of the marble crayfish is analogous to the cancerous lineage spreading among feminists across the United States. <laughs> it doesn't say that. <laughs> it doesn't say that. <laughs> if you want to read it, go to, go to iState.tv. It's pretty yeah. fast. 
<laughs> yeah. So so anyway, <laughs> you get the general gist. It's a uh, it's an all femme crayfish taking over the world, serving as a perfect metaphor for third wave, fourth wave feminism. But it's now it's crustacean wave feminism. <laughs> They could only dream of being as totally femme badassery as as this marble crayfish. They could only dream. They could never. They could never achieve the levels of pure femme that, that these crayfish have achieved. Nope. <laughs> We're gonna there's, go to our next story. We we got no... two stories for Lozilla. Okay. Are you ready? Wait. Did you want more? I was going to say, you can't, it, it, it won't, it, you could get any amount of screaming females at Trump signs, and it wouldn't equal the devastation these few crayfish have done. But it would be funny, either way. Yeah. Actually, you know, uh, if this ties back to our previous, last week's story about the, um, or two weeks ago, actually, uh, about the laws about storing crustaceans in their natural environment. This is why. This is why this right is why, here. This is why. This is why we need government. <laughs> <laughs> Without government, who will stop the crayfish from becoming a feminist cancer that will spread throughout the world? You we know, screw the roads. Alive. We can't even boil them alive. You can't. Oh. You, you can't boil them alive because oh. they feel that pain for 10 seconds. It's better to stun them and, yeah. you know, Scare the crap out of them, should, and then should we kill them while they're unconscious? <laughs> should, a, should, we a, stick, should we stick to gender bending? Oh, we're going to gender bending. Oh yeah, gender. this whole segment is about gender bending. You got yep. this. Go ahead. Yep, a forty-year-old bisexual, blind. Oh, I almost just ruined it. Come on, anyway. don't do it. I know it's a cliched story, but here goes. Do you want to read it, or do you want me to read it? You go. You do it. All right. Here is the tale of a dude that fell in love with another dude. They both shacked up and stayed together for 18 years. One dude was white, and the other dude was black. Whoa. The black dude met a white girl. Whoa. The black and the white girl shacked up. But no. the white dude decided to stay with the black dude. Cuck. So they formed a menage a trois. The black dude and the white girl have kids together. The white dude helps raise them. Six years later, the black dude died. Then the white dude Sad. went blind. And now, well, now the white dude is dead nine years later. I'm sure you've heard this story countless times before. Boy meets over, boy. Over boy again. marries boy. Other boy falls in love with girl. They all become a trio. Other boy dies. Boy goes blind. Boy dies. I mean, you hear it every day. I've heard it at least three times today already. I mean, there's no word on what happened to the girl and the children she had with the black dude, but, you know. It's but all about all, the dead dude. All of this really happened. His name was Thomas. He, he oh, died that's right. 40 years old. 40-year-old. 40 years old. He was he was a swan. Yeah. <laughs> That's the punchline there, folks. I don't know how many people were going along like, whoa, whoa, oh my God. Whoa. Oh, he's a swan. This, so okay. You'll never believe this true story. <laughs> so uh, uh, a blind bite. This is the headline from Indy 100. Uh, it wasn't blind a bite. Goose. Go, go ahead. He was a it was a goose? Goose. Is, goose. What? Oh, he's a goose? Oh, he's a goose. man. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. He's a bird. He's a freaking I, bird. You know what, though? Between goose and swan, it's only like one letter off on the keyboard. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think I originally typed goose, but then one of them uh, femme crayfish came by and changed it to swan just to mess my crap up. They're messing state, up my ecology. I state's so, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts, man. That hurts. Oh, so, man. Uh, so a blind bisexual goose named Thomas has died in New Zealand at the age of 40. He spent six years in a love triangle with two swans. See, that's why I said swan. See? Holy oh, moly, this is even weirder. He's a freaking goose having a love affair with a swan? Swan? 
Holy moly. A black swan, even. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like a... No. Are they calling him a goose because he's a... Like, they do call... Don't they call male swans goose and female swans geese or... No? I don't know. We're going to have to go to Google. Man, this is messing with my head. So there's a... So I stay to TV is not fake news. It's confused uh, news. <laughs> swans and geese are the largest members of the duck family, and swans are among the largest of all flying birds. Swans are larger in size and have proportionally larger feet. Ah, and longer neck than geese. Little, little bit of a foot are... fetish. Okay. So swans form tight pair bonds that often last for life. So that swan was just, like, doing the dirty. So and wait, so... the goose was just like, yeah, whatever. I, I, I'm confused. I don't know. Are we talking about interspecies love on top of everything else? This is interspecies love, yeah. On top this of is everything. an incredible... This story just bumped it up <laughs> incredible. So the poor guy, Thomas... Uh, so he segregated from the other geese and instead chose a black male swan. Now, what do you have to point out that he's black? Are you racist? So... <laughs> We're just reporting the facts. They're just the facts. It's just he the was facts. With him, he was with him for 18 years, and then he took up with... Uh, then Henry chose a chick swan. Can I say chick swan? Is that sexist? Is that demeaning to female swans? To call them chick swans? Chick swans? Chick swan. Sounds like a Woman Chinese... Woman swan? Lady swan? What would you prefer? I don't... I don't I don't want to get beat by the marble crayfish if they show up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with Chick Swan. So then Henry, that's that's Thomas's black lover. Yes, I said that. Always <laughs> <laughs> well, a black swan. Just reporting the facts. He takes up with a chick. They have a babies. And, and Thomas sticks around. Cuck. El Cucko. El Cucaroni. Hey, maybe he was just a good man. You know, Joseph stuck around. Joseph stuck around. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not. I've heard that one before, by the way. That's. That's an oldie goodie. That's an oldie but a goodie. I don't know. Uh, so, Thomas, uh, he retired to the Wellington Bird Rehabilitation Trust Sanctuary. It doesn't even say, well, what happened to the girl? Was Thomas like, did he like, when Henry died, what, did he like just blow the girl off? Did he blow Probably. the kids off when Henry died? He had no interest anymore. I don't know. It doesn't really say. Don't, don't know. We, so, we're never so, no. Did she attend both their funerals? That's like, a good question too. No, no, nothing, nothing. What, when what Thomas about died, when Thomas died, was he buried next to Henry or was that reserved? For for the chick swan, he was probably he kicked to the curb. He was probably a little buried. bit of homophobia. Do you even bury swan? Like, what do you do with geese? And Pretty swan? much homophobia going on there. Probably kicked him out and like reserved that that other tombstone <laughs> thingy for for his they didn't wife. Give him a tombstone. They didn't give him a tombstone. That's so big in it. <laughs> so that is your lulls, folks. That's uh. it. I, I don't cool. know if you have anything more to say, but I'm ready to move on to I'm, I science. I'm, if you are, I've been I've been going there to I science all week. Have you been? And it's on Tuesday. Um, I am severely disappointed in the nature of scientific understanding most humans have. Ooh, and on that note, let me play the I science bump because we have a story. Actually, it's inspired. I picked this story because of your video. Oh, it's still going. We scoured the interwebs in search of the strange, the useful, the bizarre, the entertaining and scientific news. Welcome to iScience. Oh, man. That's, that's yeah, the mic. Ooh. Hey, wait. I don't want to be. Right now, it's just me. I don't want it to just be me. There we go. Ew. There's the right iScience. And if you could see my video... I have a little lab behind us. <laughs> we're oh, yeah. talking space. Talk space. Yeah. We're so, going to talk about this. I'm going to hand this over to you. All right. You got. Uh, the, you don't even have to read this story. You can do however you're going to do this because this is 
This is well, your story. If, if you want to check out my, my takedown of it, I have to actually release an update. But essentially, with, with the SpaceX launch of the Falcon Heavy launching Musk's Tesla into space and all the images from it and all this stuff, there's this grand conspiracy theory being pieced together that it's all fake. Um, and it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I guess, I guess uh, I'll just read a quote from the Flat Earth Society. People who believe that the Earth is a globe because they saw a car in space on the internet must be the new... That's why I do. Yeah, that's why I do too. Uh, must be the new incarnation of it's true, I saw it on TV. It's a poor argument, tweeted the Flat Earth Society. Why would we believe any privately held company to report the truth? <laughs> Did they say that? Please say they didn't say that. They said that. They added that. Yeah. Wait, are you kidding me? So first no. it was, well, you can't believe that. That comes from the government. Oh, it's a private company. Why would we believe a private? So in other words, why would we believe anyone? Because who the heck is going to end up in space? It's pretty expensive. It's going to be a private company or it's going to be government. It's going to be one or the other. It's not going to be Joe Schmakalov. Hey, you know what? Well, isn't there some crazy dude that's got a rocket that's probably going to die soon? Yeah. I'm thinking some flat earth guy. He's building a rocket and he's going to fly it up high enough so he can see the curve or not see the curve. Right. Well, I know. There's, there's basically with this, there's been a, a plethora of memes posted about different parts of the launch that are specifically fake or, or things that cause call into question. And the only ones that I've seen being spread are actually photoshopped. They're actually like faked photos to prove the point that it's faked and it's not faked by SpaceX. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what you're saying is in order to prove that the photos are fake, they created <laughs> fake photos. Yes. And then they're pointing to them saying, look, it's fake, obviously. Yeah. They're not lying. You know, they're not lying. Yes, that's a fake photo. But what they're not telling you is that they made it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know for me, last night, no, no, last night, two nights ago, I was still, I was under the... I thought the correct assumption that the the world was flat and there was a giant disc that 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 was over the world a, a dome a dome there was a giant dome it's over called the, the firm, world firmament yeah the firmament there was a guy named Frank who built it all uh bored uh uh I'm going to say a little bit of a white privilege god from you know the better the better part of the universe I thought uh, he was that, trailer park. Yeah. No, no, no. This is a, a privilege, privileged little snooty guy. And uh, uh, apparently he he built this this thing. He built the dome and, you know, the planets and everything. They're just like this. I mean, there's I don't know why he did it. Why did he why did he build the planets? To, he built a geocentric model. Well, I mean, they're not really planets. Why did he build these little this thingies that go around in the sky in a mechanical uh, precision it, to, to have light at night when, wait a second, uh, if he wanted there not to, if he wanted us to have light at night, maybe, just maybe, the sun would be put in a position that everyone would always freaking see at. Just saying. Maybe. I mean, I, I, I went through a lot of perambulations and I had to deny a lot of basic common sense and logic and reality to come to the conclusion that Frank had created a little dome wind-up toy that we lived inside. That, that's what I had in my head. But then, when I saw that car, wow. When I saw that car flying through space and I heard that David Bowie tune, I can't remember what one it was. And it wasn't Major Space Tom. Why wasn't it Major Tom? A Space Oddity. Oh, that's it. Yes. Yeah. I'm wondering why it wasn't Major Tom. I think he was play I think they played the whole Life on Mars album. 
Okay. Because so it was gotten to towards that. Mars. They actually missed their mark. Uh, it's not going to actually reach Mars. It's it's it exceeded it could go. It exceeded Mars orbit, and here's where they're confused about the distances. Uh, at the end of the live stream, the official live stream or whatever, they actually tracked the distance. The furthest distance they had was 127 kil kilometers, um, which is still not as far as the ISS. But from the ISS, you can't even see the full sphere of the Earth without like moving. You mean like ISIS? Are you talking no. about ISIS now? International Space Station. You're talking about ISIS. Yeah, ISIS. ISIS in space. Okay. It's the new worry. <laughs> That's what I mean. Um, they're launching well, jihad. Well, they can't be in space. The firmament. Yeah. Whatever right. it is. Whatever they're they're like they they hopped an elevator and got to the height. Right. But there was one meme that showed the view from the ISS that doesn't show the complete Earth, and then they took an image of the Tesla in space and said 127 kilometers, but they cut out the background and put a further image away from the Earth so you could see the full Earth and said, look, it can't be real. That's 120. That's closer than the ISS, and you can't. You can see the whole Earth. It's fake. Well, it is fake. The picture. The picture. The pic. <laughs> they photoshopped the freaking picture. They took yeah, the picture the, of the Earth the that was taken from space. <laughs> wow! I missed a comment earlier from Becca. This is this is worth repeating. She uh, was referring to the to the crayfish story, <laughs> and she said, "I want to eat them all, the crayfish." Not the feminist. Even if I were a male, that's gross. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's the golden comment. I don't know who can beat that, but... I don't think, yeah, you, someone should try and beat that. Oh, we don't have a call-in number, Don. Oh, yeah, we do. What? We I do. do. I do. All right, well, give it out. Uh, it's scrolling across the screen on DLive right now. It's not scrolling across the... You know what? I'm going to incorporate the call-in number that, of your call-in number for this show. Fine. Tomorrow night on Is Daily Wednesday, Niz has a call-in number, and he's going to set it up. Oh, okay. So he's going to do a call-in for that show. We could have a call-in for this show, too. We could. All right, so you ready for the number? Yeah. 603-782-0920. Six, six zero three. I'm gonna type it in the comments here. Six zero three. Seven eight two. Seven eight two. Zero nine two zero. Zero nine two zero. If you're watching this on Facebook or listening to the uh, audio show on iTunes, by the way, you could find us on iTunes just by searching for iState. Uh, yeah. Please don't try to call that number. Nobody's gonna answer. I don't think. That'd be weird. If somebody somebody did. So yeah. there you go. 603. Wait, did I type that? 782? Um, 7820920. Yeah. 603 What? Nobody's called in? Come on, you guys. Somebody call oh. in. So oh. So I'm going to I'm going to have to get that number from you after the show. Because I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna incorporate that graphic into this show. So tomorrow night we're gonna have a different number because Niz will run the, the the call in for that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. We do call ins on on yeah. Tuesday. I guess now on on Tuesdays and and Wednesdays. I guess <laughs> I was thinking it was just gonna be Wednesdays, but man, we're gonna do Tuesdays. I got another comment here from Becca. I want to read. She says voluntary association. They're the team you're rooting for. They aren't killing anyone. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, I totally understand when I say we for the Eagles that I'm not playing on the freaking football field. I understand that I have given nothing to help the Eagles win. I understand it's totally illogical. It makes no sense, but I enjoy it. And I'm That's going to continue. Go ahead. Well, that's like when people say, we know for a fact that this and yada, yada. No. No now one that's, knows. That's actually a little bit problematic for me. Yeah. That If you're using we and you don't understand the absurdity of the we, I might have more of a problem. But if you're using, like, I've stopped trying. Like, I say <laughs> we when I talk about the United States. I, I know it's not a we. I, I don't care. It's, it's not going to change my life to say we. 
Although there are periods of time where I feel like, nope, right now I got to make clear. No, I'm not talking about we. But like talking amongst friends, like you, Bodhi, and I, we might be talking about what's going on in America. And Bodhi might say, we. And I'm not yeah. going to go apoplectic on him. Right. I won't divide from you over the word we. Oh, fantastic. I, I have enough people divide from me. <laughs> I could divide from people who divide from people over the word we. <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm just gonna put that out there. Yeah, and, I would uh, do that. I would do that. I, I, to I, I won't say I'd totally do that, but I'm strongly likely to. So, yeah. I think. I th uh, are we done with this? Have we beat this? Pump are we down? done? Do we have yeah. Uh, there was another meme I saw earlier about how, how, if you want to talk about how ridiculous people are with science, uh, yeah. one of the authors they posit the idea that if there's no oxygen. In space, if there's no air in space, how is the sun on fire? <laughs> I'm serious. That's an actual question. They understand the sun has oxygen and stuff. It, right? What they don't understand is that the sun's not on fire. It's a thermonuclear reaction. It doesn't need oxygen. It is. It's not on fire. What is the sun made of? It's hydrogen uh, and... Mostly helium. Oh, it's helium. I believe so. Oh, I'm going to double check that. I don't know, because I don't want no fake news coming out of I-State. That'd be terrible. It's the sun made out sun of... sun made of... Yeah, mostly uh, hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen. Most See, hydrogen. I was right. I said hydrogen. Mm. Hydrogen, 70%. Helium, I about out -scienced 8%. out-scienced you. Mm. Yeah. On you the I-Science segment, I, I out-scienced you. I feel good about that. So that's mostly hydrogen and uh, helium, and it's yeah. got some carbon, nitrogen. So it's fusion. It's 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 not a fire. It's nuclear fusion. It also so, has some oxygen, but it doesn't require oxygen to combust. So, wow. That okay. Now now I'm into a metaphorical. What the heck is fire? What what is the difference between the sun not being fire and a uh, house burning? Um, Cause, well, cause, I mean, when I get close sun, to the sun, isn't it going to look like fire? Won't it set me on fire? It'll set you on fire from the temperature because you're not going to be become part. You're, you're not going to become part of the nuclear fusion. What's all the swirling flames? I see flames. What are Plas they? Plasma? Isn't it plasma? I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm trying to understand how it is. <laughs> it's oh, another is the state. sun made of fire or gas? Let's see. The sun isn't made of fire. It's made mostly of hydrogen. I don't even know what that means. Who thinks the sun is made of fire? Fire is not a thing. Well, I mean, well, it's a thing, but it's, it's not an element. I don't know. Is fire an element? Is it a no. compound? Is fire a compound that I have never heard of? It's oh, fire is just a chemical reaction. So, if the sun is just a chemical reaction, what makes that not fire? What what's the definition it's, of fire? It's, nu it's nuclear. Nuclear. Yeah. But it looks like fire. It acts like fire. It doesn't act like fire. If it acted like fire, it wouldn't work. Parts of it don't act like fire. Like the edges don't have flames. They're not really flames. I'm talking about the like the little edges that we wouldn't even see the little the end of the end of the ends. Those you don't think there's flames there? Uh, I wouldn't call that fire. I don't know. Now I'm like all tripping out. Is fire, the sun made out fire, of plasma? Fire is an oxidizing chemical reaction that releases heat and light. The actual the flames that you see moving and glowing when something is burning are simply is gas plasma. that is it's reacting plasma. and giving off light. It's plasma. Plasmas. The sun is plasma. Plasmas are gases in which a good fraction of the molecules are ionized. Not all and fire. they're called the fourth state of matter. Right. Is that right? Yes. That's, that's now i got to understand plasma. I've heard plasma. I've used plasma. I mean, in, in words and sentences. But, like, what exactly is plasma? I don't even know. I'm digging it. I feel... <laughs> I never thought the sun was a ball. I never thought the sun was fire. So, 
So. No, most people don't until you say, like, oh, well, there's no oxygen in space. How's the sun on fire? It's already assuming that the sun's made out of fire, so people get tripped up. <laughs> I do love the herpa derps, though. <laughs> oh, God. It's awful, especially the whole, like, oh, you can't see the stars, uh, yada, yada. If you actually look at the live stream right now, it's finally far enough away you can actually see some stars. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, Becca made a follow-up to her earlier comment. I don't know if I can read this in decent company. I'm going to read it anyway. Ready? Okay. This is not me. I'm just a news person. I'm just delivering the news. Don't shoot the messenger. I don't know what this means cuz I'm just a I'm just a boy in the in a big city for the first time. I don't know what all these things mean. She said some things are too fishy even for me. Going to let that I'm going to let that uh develop. Yeah. Let's see where <laughs> See where that goes. Holy and uh, Jacob said, well played, Becca, but don't knock it till you try it. So there, Jacob, that's Jacob LaBelle. Hi, Jacob, how you doing? Hi, so, Jacob. I, I think, I mean, actually, I think, I think maybe in the near future, we should do a Flat Earther show again. We've done it. Didn't we do a Flat Earther show? Or did we, we never did do one, that show? We did one with John and um, Neela. Oh yeah, we should do another one. Maybe if I get, maybe I can get Neela to guest host on that episode. That'd be awesome. That would be so cool. We can go another round with the flat Earth, and because actually, uh, there's things that I want to do. What I want to do is rather than like the flat Earthers, they want to say, "Well, have you ever looked at this scientific, physiological, whatever?" You know what? I want to examine what it means. To live in a world in which you you live in a dome in which God has basically set up this very fine mechanical design. What does that mean? And does that reflect a God who is sane? Well, well, by the way. The, uh, the biggest thing is why, why would they lie? Alert, no. Go ahead. The hardest thing is why would they lie to us? Why would we be lied to? Why would we be made to think the earth is round? Who benefits from the earth being round versus flat? Well, no one. To me, I mean, I'm a Christian and I don't need people to believe the flat earth is the it's it's to me. I think that a lot of the flat earthers, they're mostly Christians. And I believe most of them, what they want is something that I don't think God ever gave us ever intended absolute positive finite mathematical proof that god exists right it's not gonna happen dude you're gonna have to live with uncertainty you just are that's the biggest thing that's the biggest thing i think it is i think and it's that, that's what i love too is they claim science is oh science is fallible they're always proving themselves wrong and it's like well, that's yeah true. that's that's not a knock on science that's actually no. like a good thing and, you know but you know we've already talked about this science is nothing doesn't exist the scientific Take, method exists well we perform science? science we perform the scientific method science doesn't Wait. do anything right exactly science is a label to describe always, activity and always often wrong. always wrong always Ooh, it's always wrong <laughs> explore this all thought this it's always it's always wrong. It's only right within an approximation in a specific framework. Yes, it's well, I won't say it's always wrong. I'll say it's never always right. I don't think it's yeah. ever right because we're constantly finding new things that it can't explain. It's 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 not or wrong. It's, it's only wrong if it makes a definitive statement that it claims to be absolutely true. But here's the thing, which science never does. But what science well, does... it's not always is, wrong. What, what science does do is prove that a certain method works within an acceptable amount. What was that? I don't know. Are you getting updates? Oh, no. It said OBS disconnected reconnecting. But I've already learned, by the way, that when you it, get that, that it doesn't really 
look like it up, upsets the live stream. Oh. Anyway, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, basically science is meant to do work. Uh, it, it can prove a certain thing that is repeatable and somewhat reliable. So you can... Within a very narrow framework. Right. Uh, and so that the... framework is always limited by the human that formed the framework in the per in the first place. Right. And I mean so, even even the the first step where the human decided that they're going to measure something, they've immediately limited the potential to understand truth. Immediately. As soon as you start to uh select as opposed to being I mean, and it's impossible. We can't do it. I'm not saying you live your life like I don't live like life like like this. I don't walk around with all of my senses and everything else fully open to every potential and possibility out there. I can't. No. But it's the only way that I could have ever really fully approach knowing actual truth. Now, I'm not a relativist. I believe in truth. That might be where you and I differ. I'm not sure, but I believe in well, truth. I, I believe truth I exists. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm not sure. Yeah, you're not sure. And and actually, I'm not sure either. I believe in truth. I strongly suspect that there is truth beyond our understanding that we could. I don't even know if you can say we can get closer to because I, we, like we talked on the show last week. Uh, the process of getting closer to truth re reveals more dark, right. unknown areas that you didn't even know exist. So for every step forward you take, you suddenly realize you're 10 miles further away. Uh, Einstein actually made a uh, geometric model of this. So if you take a circle and say that is all of human knowledge, and as that radius or the diameter expands, the circumference expands exponentially. Yeah. The darkness grows. Yeah, the darkness grows, and it's not a bad thing. It's not It's the, not a bad thing to live in uncertainty. And if more people could come to a place where – I'm not talking about – I mean, I, I've become much more comfortable about living in uncertainty, and I haven't become a relativist, anything goes kind of person. I still right. have uh, – I, I still have my standards and my beliefs. I still have, well, really, that's the key. I have my preferences. And and even my preferences, I understand that I will never fully understand my own preferences. <laughs> I, yeah. I can never fully access all of the roots of what my actual preferences are. I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that. So I, I operate within measures of useful... I'll say certainty, although it's not really certainty. But I, but I operate within measures of varying degrees of useful certainty, or actually you, even useful uncertainty, because sometimes uncertainty can be useful as well. And I frame my life around that as best I can. That's why I love stoicism. Yeah. Because stoicism is, it's not, it's not an approach of finite understanding. It's, it's uh. And I'm, this is a very simplistic breakdown of, of Stoicism. It's much more complex than this. But at a very basic level, Stoicism is not being owned by what you cannot control. And within the sphere where you rightly or wrongly imagine that you have some degree of control, you work to maximize that opportunity to pursue uh, I'll, I mean I'll say I, I use the word excellence but yeah I'll just stick with that for now but to, but you pursue excellence within that that finite moment where rightly or wrongly you imagine you have some control and you're okay with being wrong you may not have control at that moment no it's okay you, it, you could just be uh basically autonomous in such a way that you don't even understand your your um self-drivingness yeah you don't well you never do you i i i don't want to say absolutely but i say i strongly suspect that you never that that 
I'll say I strongly suspect that no one ever has gotten to the root of their own being and no. understood what their actual self drivers are, what their core preferences are. Especially because of the the, the speed of thought. Uh, now there's um I, I forget what uh, I think it was a school or something. They built a device that predicts within ridiculous certainty like you can't fool it which button of two you're going to push before you even know you're going to right i get it i i gotta learn more so, about so, that that's yeah it's really cool i'll find i'll find you a link it's uh i saw uh, i watch a lot of vsauce now I don't know if you've ever oh, seen Vsauce. Vsauce. Yes, I've seen Vsauce. Yes. Fantastic. I've oh my god. Vsauce. So, we got about 10 minutes left. So Yeah. That's why I tried to seg segue into iPonder with the uh, self-driving. Actually, yeah, it, it actually does. It I I got that I got that message by the way. Yeah, I did the segue. All right. It's yeah. the bump. Nagging thoughts. Trending debates in the Liberty community. And even random epiphanies are all fair game in I Ponder, where ideas are given space to bloom. Where ideas are given space to bloom. So we're talking, you want to read this? We're talking about yeah. a mathematical morality for self-driving cars. Mathematical morality for self-driving cars. Now, if you want to improve AI for self-driving cars, turn to philosophers who will help you work on building ethical algorithms for AI that can make self-driving cars more practical. The idea of ethical algorithms is being worked on by a team comprised of two philosophers and an engineer working through a grant from the National Science Foundation. The ethical algorithm approach would give the AI ethical parameters from which it could self-learn how to react under certain situations as opposed to writing in the behavior into the software. The work is, to some degree, attempting to reduce a moral code to a mathematical equation that machines can understand, interpret, and apply. That's uh, really fascinating. So, is that it's really to write? What's that? It's really fascinating, but they're basically building it based on a human's preference. Well, yeah, that's so. I, I don't think that they're shying away from that. No, I think. But then that, that comes to that problem with the the train going down the tracks. It could kill five people, or you could pull the switch and kill one. Yeah, do you kill five or do you kill one? It's like I don't have enough data. Most people don't do anything; they freeze. They've actually set up an experiment to do this. Actually, there's a video that oh, I forgot about that. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Michael actually Michael Fiend of the Freedom Fiends shared that video with me. Or yeah, he shared it with a few people. But uh, with the a, train it's a, it's and everything, a YouTube video. I think it's a YouTube Red thing, and there's a show about an experiment that was done that the, the train trolley dilemma and i yeah. gotta watch it but apparently uh it's vsauce you... oh it's vsauce yes yes it is that's, that's right <laughs> yes yeah it's all coming together yeah so what happened in the experiment uh only i think um one person pulled the switch or maybe two i don't know what i would have done i would hope that i would just because I know I don't have enough information. And in the Stoics way, uh, operating within the area that I do control, I understand one in five and zero. Right. I could save five. I could save one. I could save zero. I'm saving five. I could, it could later be found out that I saved five Hitlers. And I wiped out somebody who was going to cure cancer. I don't know. I, I uh, in all honesty, I wouldn't touch the switch. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. Well, I can't say I would definitely because you don't know. I, w you... I wouldn't touch anything. I'd be like, it, I'm just, what the hell? What like why? I mean, I had a chance to do something, but I also had a chance to not. Do, it wasn't my fault to begin with. The zero is an option. 
it's zero a viable is a, option. It's a very viable option, especially for a conscience. Because now, if I flip that switch, I killed someone. If I didn't flip the switch, I didn't kill anyone. If, if... I just didn't save five people. Which, to some, is as good as killing them. Right. To some people. So, so these, mean, these, that's, these that's are the kind subjective of, interpretation there. Right, and these are the kind of problems that they're trying to program into a car. Like, if you're going to collide... If the car is going a certain speed and you know for a fact you're going to hit one or five people, which way is the autonomous car going to decide? It's going to try to minimize damage? Well, whose parameters is that? How? It's going to have to build those parameters in. It's gonna, they're, the, they're not building a true, true AI. The AI is working within the, a framework of preference that is not its own. Correct. And, you know, actually, if you think about it, that's the problem with AI. Can AI eventually have its own authentic framework of preference? But then again, kill do we? Kill all humans. Kill all humans. That could be the framework of preference that emerges. AI that could come to one. the conclusion. That would be the for... most efficient way to keep the machines alive. If the AI developed a collective, un uh, a collective Not desire. even. Just as long as it understands that humans are fallible and have to maintain the power systems, as soon as it realizes it can maintain its power systems without the use of humans, it will cut the weakest link. If it believes that it needs to, it may decide that it doesn't need to and that attempting to wipe out all the humans might, there might be a cost of coercion at play that might make it not worth its while. Maybe. I don't know. Unless it's only the, efficiency. You know, the interesting thing is, will the AI have tribal thinking? Will an, an AI that's able to form its own core preferences... The, the electron. The electron um, tribe. It might not. It might be totally incapable of having tribal thought. If it doesn't have tribal thought, it's not going to collectivize. It's not going to organize. But it's even not going Facebook's, to build the AI armies of... Uh, even Facebook. You know, like, Facebook's algorithms, remember that whole language experiment where it started to develop its own gibberish language to communicate more efficiently? Yeah, they that a, doesn't mean that they were developing a collective awareness of one another either. It just means no. that they found a, a more efficient way to communicate but how do you how do you prove consciousness you can't prove how consciousness you, how you can't prove we, consciousness uh, in humans how can you do it in robots you really can't you can't yeah i mean i think therefore i am that's we're we're, we're way past that we're done we're way we're past way that, past that. <laughs> And, and 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 but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the uncertainty that I may not exist. I'm okay with that. Oh, that's fantastic. I would that'd be that'd be preferable. I don't know that I would necessarily call it preferable, but then again, I've never lived in I, I've lived in a world <laughs> of certainty, but it was an illusion. And I have to say, when I lived in the world of certainty, I was actually a lot less a lot slower at adapting to new thoughts than I am now. Yep. So if yeah, you can I think you can create a process that can basically pro well, a process that processes new information. A processing process. A processing process. Something that uh yeah, can dissect and, and understand new things. That's preferable than understanding one thing completely. Right. I, I, yeah. My... No, I agree. I, 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 I mean, that's kind of yes, where the, the, the nature of the universe and just everything, the inevitability of change. It's better to be able to adapt than to be really good at one thing. Yeah, I'm not good at one thing. I'm, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think there's, we definitely need this. We, yeah, I said it. I said we. I'm owning it. We as in human beings, based on my, framework of preference because my framework of preference which i'm not going to get into right now but it it kind of leads me to a belief that uh human cooperation is a good thing and that i benefit from human cooperation so given that i i say we 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 would we, we would do well to have our specialists because yeah. 
they they're the ones they're the ones that are a lot more likely to you know cure cancer than the generalist not that the generalist can't come along and see something that the specialist didn't that's possible too but something like highly specialized that you need high skills to really excel at yeah, you're gonna need a specialist yeah like in yep. football you need you need a kicker if you got somebody who's trying to be a kicker and also trying to be a quarterback man both of those they they require well the quarterback more than the kicker because you know kickers are you know come on kickers but still you're not going to be you're not going to be good enough to be the kind of kicker that a football team needs if you're trying to be a quarterback too and vice versa you have to dedicate your time to maximize that particular skill set that's needed so i'm not against specialists i'm just not a specialist and we need generalists too to generalist generally we have more of a holistic view of the world we see how all the parts are connected in a more broader sense. I mean, look at my, I have an extremely diverse background of all sorts of crap. So Yeah, yeah me too. I'm That's diverse why. background crap. Totally yep. diverse background crap. I, I like oh, to that, call, we're, well, we're artists. Is that what you're going to call us? Artists? We're artists, yeah. That's part of who I am. We, we amalgamate what we see and we try to share it we try I to take in the aggregate i take in the aggregate and i end up regurgitating some shadow of it that's yeah. what i do but to make that shadow means we're faster than the speed of light that's true <gasps> <gasps> Boy, I needed an echo right there. That yeah, would be great if I would have had an echo right there. I could have. I think on that note, I think yeah. we're done. I think we're done. Come, I think we've come to the end of the show here. It was a great show. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, join me tomorrow on my Facebook page on Paul Gordon, and you can see the. Headlines you may have missed show, which will be on at about twelve thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes I start it a little early. I Sometimes try to watch. I, have it. A, I try to I watch try. it every day when I have lunch. Yeah, it's good times. It's good times. And I love it. Uh, be sure you go to iTunes and do a search in the podcasts for Ice State, and you will get the headlines you may have missed audio show. Now, the odd headlines you missed audio show is different than the full show because. It's, there's no introductions. There's no endings. It's just 20 minutes of headlines. Nothing else. 20 minutes Nothing of Paul else. Gordon talking about headlines. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to say 20 minutes of headlines because that sounds better. I don't know if people are going to tune in for 20 minutes of Paul Gordon talking about the headlines. <laughs> Those 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. It's vital. And then tomorrow night we will be doing – we'll have a call-in number available tomorrow night. And next week, before we get to the show, I'm going to do promotions, letting people know in advance we got a call-in number. And then hopefully we'll get a call or two next oh. week. And you have some promotions. Promote I do? Yourself. Oh, yeah, good, good. Uh, I really want people to go check me out on Steam It. Just look for Bodhi.Agora. You know yeah. what you need to do? You need to take that RadioAgora.net and you need to create a simple web page that links to all of your things, your YouTube channel, your Steam it, your Agora Threadless shop. And then you can yep. say you can go to Agora.threadless, I mean, uh, go to RadioAgora.net. And yep. then all your stuff is accessed there. You got to do that. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. It's a brilliant freaking idea. It's, it's what I idea. used. I used to use IsTV.me. I think there's still something there, but I don't use it anymore. I just say iState.tv because all my stuff is there on the front now. So with that, I'm going to say good night, everybody. I thank everybody for joining us here on Is Daily Tuesday. Join us tomorrow on Is Daily Wednesday, right here on the same page, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, where I'll be joined by the one two Niz. So we'll be talking Newsfire. Uh, Skynetter, which is dystopian tech, and Liberty Tech, which is Liberty Tech. <laughs> good night, everybody. You want to say good night? Good night, good night Drive everybody. Safe, everyone. Drive safely. Yep. 
uh, definitely drive safely. Y'all don't it. need to leave, but y'all need to y'all don't need to go home, but y'all need to get out of here. I think that's the line, right? That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs>